Well, the universe is vast. It is full of stars, galaxies. For a long time we could only see the bright and nearby ones, but a new eye on the cosmos has opened. The James Webb Space Telescope, also called Webb, lets us look deeper than ever before. It is a powerful tool. It can see light that has traveled for billions of years to reach us. This means Webb is a time machine. It shows us what the universe looked like when it was very, very young. In its very first picture something stood out, tiny, faint, red dots. They were scattered across the blackness of space almost like a whisper from the past. These red dots were a surprise, but some of these dots seemed different, they were very red, and some appeared very bright for how far away they seemed to be. This sparked a great question. What are these mysterious red dots? Are they the first galaxies we have ever seen, born in the cosmic dawn? Are they something else entirely, something we did not expect? The quest to understand these simple-looking points of light has become one of the most exciting new frontiers in astronomy. Each dot is a puzzle, a clue to how everything we know began. It is like being a detective with a crime scene that is 13 billion years old. We have to use all of our tools to understand them. These tools help us measure the light, the color, the brightness, the shape of each dot tell a story. The birth of stars, the growth of black holes, the creation of the first cosmic cities. Let's break down the mystery into simple parts. Think of it as ABC. A is what we see. B is why they are red. C is what they might be. This simple frame helps us organize the puzzle. It takes us from observation to explanation. Each step builds on the last. We start with the most basic fact. The dots are there. A is for what we see. We see tiny, point-like dots of light in Webb's deepest images. They don't look like the grand, swirling galaxies we see closer to us. They are much smaller and fainter. They are often found in special survey fields. These are patches of sky Webb has stared at for many hours. By staring long the telescope collects the faintest light from the most distant objects. B is for why they are red. There are two main reasons. Reason 1. The expansion of the universe. Expansion stretches space and light blue or ultraviolet light gets stretched into redder wavelengths. This is called redshift. The more distant, the redder due to more stretching. Reason 2. Dust. Space contains tiny grains of dust. Dust blocks blue light more than red, reddening objects behind it. C is for what they might be. This is where the exciting possibilities lie. First, extremely distant galaxies, seen as they were a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. Second, young galaxies with feeding supermassive black holes, an accreting black hole can glow very brightly in red. Third, young dusty starburst galaxies. Rapid star formation shrouded in dust makes them look very red. To solve the mystery of the red dots, scientists use special tools. These tools help them read the secret language of light. Light carries a huge amount of information. It tells us about an object's distance, its temperature, what it is made of. The main tools we use are redshift, infrared light, spectra. Each one gives us a different piece of the puzzle. One of the most important tools is redshift. Redshift is a number that shows how much light has been stretched by the universe's expansion. A bigger redshift means the light traveled farther and is older. Measuring a red dot's redshift gives its distance and age. This is the first step in understanding what we're seeing. It tells us if it's from the cosmic dawn or something closer and dusty. Redshift is our ruler for space and time. Another key tool is infrared light. Infrared is light our eyes can't see. It has longer wavelengths than red light. Webb was built to see infrared. This is crucial for two reasons. First, because of redshift, visible and ultraviolet light from the farthest galaxies shifts into infrared. So to see them, we must look in infrared. Second, dust that hides galaxies glows when warmed by stars. That glow peaks in infrared, so Webb sees stretched light from distant galaxies and the telltale glow of dusty ones. The most powerful tool is a spectrum. A spectrum spreads light into colors like a rainbow. But cosmic rainbows have dark and bright lines, those lines are fingerprints. Each chemical element creates a unique line pattern. Hydrogen, oxygen, studying those lines gives an exact redshift for a red dot. Spectra also reveal what gases are present, how fast stars are forming, whether a hungry black hole hides inside. Getting a spectrum is the gold standard for confirming a mysterious object's identity. The red color of these distant dots is the most important clue we have. It is the first thing we notice. But the reason for that color can be tricky. As we saw there are two main culprits, the stretching of space, the presence of cosmic dust. Often it is a combination of both. Figuring out how much of the redness comes from distance and how much comes from dust is the central challenge. Let's look closer at the stretching of space. 
This is the redshift effect. The universe has been expanding since the Big Bang. Imagine drawing a wave on a rubber sheet then stretching the sheet. The wave gets longer. Light travels as a wave. Through expanding space, the wave gets stretched. Short wavelengths look blue, long wavelengths look red. When light from a very distant galaxy reaches Webb's mirror, its waves can be stretched so much the galaxy looks very red. Now, cosmic dust. Dust equals tiny particles of elements like carbon, silicon, made inside stars and blown into space when stars die. Star-forming galaxies can make lots of dust. Dust acts like a filter. It scatters and blocks blue light but lets redder light through. A dusty galaxy hides blue light so we mostly see red. Warm dust can glow producing extra infrared light, so, we have a puzzle. Is it red because of high redshift, or is it red because of dust, or is it a mix of both? A dusty moderate distance galaxy can mimic an extremely distant dust-free galaxy. To tell them apart, we need more than a single picture. We measure brightness across many filters, bluer light to redder infrared light. The brightness pattern across colors helps break the tie, ancient object or a dusty teenager. Well, when the first results about the red dots came out, they sent a wave of excitement through the science community. Some of these dots appeared to be, you know, too big, too bright, too mature for their age. According to our best models, galaxies should start small and grow slowly over billions of years. It's like building a city. You start with a few huts, not a skyscraper. We expected the first galaxies to be small, messy, and relatively faint. But some of Webb's first red dots seemed to challenge that. Based on their colors, they appeared to have very high redshifts placing them in the first 500 million years of the universe. Yet when scientists estimated their mass from brightness, the numbers were shockingly high. Some seemed as massive as our Milky Way but at a time when the universe was still a toddler. This was a major puzzle, an impossible early galaxies problem and it became a hot topic of debate. The news was exciting but scientists are trained to be skeptical. They began to look for other explanations. Could something be fooling us? One possibility, they weren't massive all at once, a brief intense starburst making them temporarily very bright. Another possibility, an active central black hole, or dust in the early universe confusing our measurements. This is why first clues are never the final word. They kick off a new investigation. The surprise forced everyone to recheck assumptions. It showed the early universe might be even more complex and interesting than we imagined. As scientists have gathered more data, three main explanations for the red dots have emerged. Each has points in its favor and points against it. The truth is likely a mix, with different dots belonging to different categories. Sorting them out is the key to building a new map of the cosmic dawn. The first idea is the most straightforward. The dots are simply very high redshift galaxies. They are the building blocks of the universe, seen as they were just after they first switched on. The main evidence for this idea comes from their colors. Many red dots show a specific color pattern. They are visible in Webb's redder filters but completely disappear in its bluer filters. This is a classic sign of a dropout object. The space between galaxies is filled with a thin fog of hydrogen gas. This gas absorbs all light that is bluer than a specific wavelength. However, the big problem is that some of them seem too massive. Our cosmological models struggle to explain how such large structures could form so quickly. The second idea, some red dots are galaxies hosting actively growing supermassive black holes. These are called active galactic nuclei, or AGN. A black hole on its own is dark but as it pulls in gas and dust the material heats up and glows. This can make a small young galaxy look like a very bright point-like red dot. Hot dust around the black hole glows strongly in the infrared matching Webb's colors. Spectra from some red dots show specific emission lines from gas moving very fast near a black hole, which supports the AGN idea. The downside, not all red dots show these signs. Many appear powered by stars not black holes. The third explanation, younger, less distant galaxies that are extremely dusty. These are dusty star-forming galaxies. They are forming stars at an incredible rate. New massive stars produce a lot of dust. That thick dust blocks blue and visible light, and the dust itself warms and glows, making the galaxy bright and red in Webb's infrared. Some red dots are brightest at the longest infrared wavelengths, a sign of warm dust. The main objection is whether there was time in the early universe to make so much dust. The elements that make dust are forged in stars and that process takes time. The story of the red dots is unfolding in real time. Each new data set and scientific paper adds a piece to the puzzle. 
Looking at a timeline shows how our understanding evolved from initial surprise to careful, detailed investigation. The journey began the moment Webb's first images were released. July 2022. Webb's first deep field images are released. The public and scientists are amazed by the clarity and depth. Immediately researchers begin spotting an abundance of very red, compact objects. August 2022. The first scientific papers appear claiming galaxy candidates at redshifts greater than 10. Some candidates appear surprisingly massive. The impossible early galaxy problem emerges. November 2022. The JADES program confirms the first galaxies with spectra at redshifts above 12. This proves Webb can indeed find galaxies in the first 400 million years of cosmic history. Some of the red dots are confirmed to be truly ancient. April 2023. A study reveals that one red dot in the Sears field is a massive active black hole. This black hole existed when the universe was only about 570 million years old. This confirms that some red dots are indeed AGN. For the red dots this means moving from candidates to confirmations. This process is like a funnel. You start with many possibilities and through rigorous testing you narrow them down to the most likely truth. The next crucial step is getting a spectrum. This is the ultimate test. It requires pointing web at a single faint dot for many hours to collect enough light. This light is then passed through an instrument called a spectrograph, which splits it into a rainbow. This rainbow or spectrum contains the fingerprints of atoms and molecules. By finding the pattern of a known element like hydrogen and seeing how far it has been shifted toward the red scientists can measure the redshift with certainty. By combining all of these clues, colors, spectra, shape and environment, scientists can finally build a confident profile of what each red dot truly is. The mystery of the red dots is far from solved, but we are entering a new and exciting chapter. We have moved from the initial shock of discovery to a phase of systematic, careful investigation. The James Webb Space Telescope is not just taking pretty pictures, it is conducting a grand cosmic census. By studying these faint points of light, we are piecing together the story of the first billion years of the universe. What we are learning is that the cosmic dawn was a busy and complex time. It was not a simple uniform process. It was a place of rapid growth, powerful black holes, and surprisingly dusty environments. So, what are the red dots? The answer is that they are not just one thing. Some are the fantastically distant galaxies we hope to find, the first seeds of cosmic structure. Others are the cradles of the universe's first supermassive black holes, which grew much faster than we thought possible. And still others are incredibly productive star factories, churning out new suns at a furious pace while shrouded in dust. The real discovery is not what any single dot is, but what the mixture of all of them tells us. The proportion of each type of object is a critical clue to the physics that govern the young universe. The work to come will be even more detailed. Scientists will take deeper images to find even fainter and more distant dots. They will obtain thousands more spectra, turning a handful of confirmed objects into a vast and robust catalog. With this data, they will be able to make the first reliable maps of the cosmic web as it was first forming. They will be able to count how many galaxies existed at different times, measure how quickly they grew, and see when and where the first supermassive black holes lit up. This is a revolutionary step in our quest to understand our origins. We live in a remarkable moment. For all of human history the first billion years of the universe were a closed book, a theoretical realm we could only imagine. Now Webb has opened that book, the tiny red dots scattered across its images are the words on the first page. By learning to read them, we are learning to read our own cosmic story. The universe is showing us how it began, and for the first time, we have an eye sharp enough to see it.